first onboarding webinar of the 2024 Materials Benchmark Cycle. We are delighted to have you today. Thank you for joining the session. I'm Claire from the Materials Benchmark team at Textile Exchange, and I'm really excited to kick off this session, which is dedicated for all returning and new participants wishing to participate in the Materials Benchmark this year. Just a note before we start, uh, today's presentation is recorded and you will receive by email uh, the recording uh, afterwards if you, you agreed to receive our communications when you registered. It will also be posted on the Hub and on our YouTube channel. As you probably know, the uh, survey will be launched on April 1st, which is just around the corner. So in the next hour, we uh, want to make sure that we cover everything that you need to know to prepare and complete the materials benchmark survey smoothly. We also want to leave time for questions. So there will be a dedicated Q&A uh, at the end of the session, but feel free to use the Q&A box if you want. Uh, I think it will be open for the first 10 minutes and then we will jump into the, um, the Q&A box if you have any burning questions. As we like to keep our sessions interactive, we'd like to keep you to ask you to type in the chat box uh, where you are coming from, if um, uh, your company name maybe, or if you are expecting anything from this uh, session. So I'll be the one, uh, the first one typing, and I see Jesse already did as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, so looking forward to see all your chats coming over. And maybe while you all uh, type in the chat box, we can go on the next slide, slide while I cover the contents. So here is what we will cover today. We will start with an introduction to explain what the materials benchmark is about. Um, we will then go on the overview to provide some more key details like the timeline, uh, the, um, what you can expect from benchmarking with us. Then we'll go uh, a more deep dive in the survey and the different sections particularly on the materials portfolio, which is the, um, the core of the survey. And then we'll go through uh, support and guidance needed to complete the survey. And we'll conclude by a QA. and a On the next slide, uh, the next one, please. Yeah. So we, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the materials benchmark team. Uh, if my team wants to turn on the camera or say a quick hi. So you might hear from a few of us today. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see you all. So our team is led by our senior manager, Hayley Warren, which, who is here on the call with us. And we also have my colleagues, Chiara, Francesca, Brenna, and Jessica in the call today. So we can go on the next slide. Thank you. So we'd like to begin with what the materials benchmark is all about. So it is a peer-to-peer -peer comparative tracking of fibers and raw materials sourced by companies in the fashion, textile, and apparel industry. It was developed by Textile Exchange to help companies track and measure the uptake of their and impact of their raw materials and fibers. Also to report on the strategic approach of their fibers and raw materials against an industry recognized framework and to support the industry in reaching the Climate Plus targets, which consists of a 45% reduction in greenhouse gas, gas emissions by 2030. It's also worthy to note that uh, the Materials Benchmark is the largest peer-to-peer -peer comparison initiative in the textile industry, and we track uh, the apparel, footwear, and home textiles sector's progress towards more sustainable uh, material sourcing. If you also want to uh, get a good overview of what the materials benchmark is about, we suggest to watch the, the video. You can see the link at the bottom of the slide. And um, you can also, so we, you will be able to see it when we share the slide deck a bit later, or it's also available on our YouTube channel and uh, our website. On the next slide, I'd like to take you through the um, evolution of the materials benchmark over the last nine years. So it was piloted in 2015 with 57 uh, brands and retailers and was then consolidated over the years after various uh, stakeholder consultations. Um, we also opened it, uh, our scope to suppliers and manufacturers in 2019 with a pilot. From 2019, we also increased our focus on uh, climate and nature, 
with um, the introduction of a biodiversity module. And last year in 2023, we did um, rebranding and the survey was revised and streamlined and we uh, were called the materials benchmark. We also had a new uh, holistic framework because we not only cover material sourcing, but also um, business integration, impact areas and uh, circular economy. We are also working on industry alignments um, to avoid the duplication of efforts. So that's why we have aligned with the Fashion Fact from 2021. 20, um, uh, the subsidiary reports on the materials benchmark to report on their progress towards the three focus areas that are climate, biodiversity, and oceans. Last year, we also uh, started aligning with Cascale, which is previously known as the Sustainable Apparel Coalition. And we aligned with their BRM module on 13 questions. Uh, as you can see on the bottom of the slide, uh, the materials benchmark is also the place for challenge signatories to report on their progress towards the challenges target. So we have the sustainable cotton challenge and the recycled polyester challenge. And this year we have a brand new um, commitment, which is the deforestation free call to action for leather. And we have developed a new module that is uh, exclusive for the signatories. Finally, last year we hit uh, another record, participation record, with uh, 394 brands and retailers joining. This figure includes their subsidiaries, and we also had uh, 52 suppliers and manufacturers participating. And of course, this year we hope to draw even more participation to even uh, better represent the industry. On the next slide, so just to give you an overview of the impact generated by the materials benchmark, the figures that you can see on the left of the slide um, came from the 2023 survey. So we had 446 participants joining and they came from, from 27 countries and they represented over a billion uh, dollars at turnover. We had um, 14 raw materials that have been covered, tracked, and measured in the materials portfolio. And among these materials, 48% uh, came from preferred sources. Now, if we look at the scope on the right of the slide, it's similar to textile action scope. That is to say, we focus on tier four. Um, we also map individual and industry progress for our survey and through our uh, holistically designed survey, but we'll have a look at the, um, the, the framework in a bit. We also support uh, industry alignment, as we just saw, and uh, all of this in order to support the climate and nature goals and targets. On the next slide. So here we have the materials benchmark framework. You can see that the survey is divided in four different sections. You have the business integration, circular economy, the materials portfolio, and the impact areas. The, the important thing to note is that only the materials portfolio is mandatory for you to complete. It's also uh, important to note that uh, our framework is based on our scoring methodology. So you can see, um, on the top right corner, uh, the, the scores and uh, each section has a maximum maximum sorry of scores of points that contribute to the overall score. But we will have a look, uh, a deep dive in each section and the scoring methodology a bit later in the, in the presentation. I will now pass the floor to Jesse for the next section. Thank you so much, Claire, um, and thank you everybody for being us, with us today here. So now I'm going to provide you with an overview of the program. And we're going to start with uh, the WHO. So the materials benchmark is open to the apparel and also to the textile industry. Um, and retinees, of course, are already aware of this. But for new participants, uh, it's important this information. So for brands and retailers, we recommend to take part if you source uh, fibers and raw materials I can report the uptake volumes for at least one of your uh, priority raw materials. For suppliers and manufacturers, it's very similar. Uh, so also we recommend to take part if you source fibers and raw materials. And you can report uptake volumes for at least one of your priority raw materials. I know that when we talk about priority raw materials, it's based on what you consider as priority. 
A textile exchange we define priority of raw materials, and we will deep dive into the definition later in the presentation when we talk about the core of the survey, which is the materials portfolio. Also to mention in terms of the scope that the uptake volumes reported in scope are those coming from virgin and or recycled raw materials, as you can see in the slide. And um, in case you are not sure if you are eligible or not, of course, here we are, you know, to answer that question. On the right, you will see also that the benchmark will continue to be reporting, the reporting tool for the organization's challenges. And as Claire mentioned before, this year for the first time, we also have included the deforestation free call to action for leather, which we ask brands and retailers to commit to sourcing their bovine leather from deforestation uh, free supply chains by 2030 or earlier. So moving from the who to the to the why, so why to take part uh, in the materials benchmark survey. So first you will be part of the community creating material change, because we know, know that climate action starts at the source of the materials uh, we choose. So first you will be able to compare your performance against the largest voluntary peer to peer benchmark in the fashion and textile industry. Also, you will be able to build a fiber strategy and use the benchmark to guide improvements. By doing that reporting also, you will be able to demonstrate a commitment to transparency and continuous improvement around your materials sourcing strategy and meet reporting requirements set by stakeholders, no? uh, like for example, investor or customers and legislation that we know that is becoming more and more important. And last but not least, also engage with others in the community and learn from best practices. Now, moving from the why to when. So what is the materials benchmark journey? That's how it looks like. Uh, we are in the first uh, part, so from January, March, March, that what we call the outreach and onboarding uh, is the time to register and get ready, including, of course, these uh, webinars. Uh, and also we have been offering pre-support calls for those uh, companies that have asked for. The next one that is coming very soon, as we know, uh, is the data collection that will go from April to June. So the survey, uh, the materials benchmark survey, will be open from April 1st uh, and close on June 7th and will be open for 10 weeks. And during this time, uh, you will have the opportunity to attend our weekly support calls that were for regionists formerly known as drop-ins and will take place every Thursday from April 11th. So they are topic-based support calls uh, to provide any additional support during the submission phase and to ensure that you are covering, we are covering, sorry, the topics that you need towards the end of the presentation, you will see that we're gonna launch a poll uh, and ask you. Moving to the next phase uh, of this uh, journey is uh, uh, the data analysis that will go from June to August. So at that moment, uh, the team will work on the data review and analysis so we review your data uh, in case of uh, anything is incomplete or need further cl uh, clarification, we will get back to you. And the last phase is the benchmark results. Uh, so in September this year, you will get uh, all your results. So you will see that we decided again to launch the benchmark even earlier in the year with the aim to shorten the window and provide you your results in September uh, so you can take action earlier. Of course, if you think that the current timeline will cause any problems, please uh, basically tell us. Uh, we will support you uh, throughout your journey. Now that uh, we better understand what is the journey of uh, the, the survey, we are going to move to what you get from the materials benchmark. Uh, so what are the results? Uh, the confidential scorecard. Uh, so the confidential scorecard is confidential and you will have access uh, in your portal in the materials benchmark survey pro page. Uh, so there are customized scorecards that provide you with an analysis of your results, including an, an annual comparison against the scores from previous years. It's important to know that textile exchange members, you will receive an advanced scorecard as part of your membership, and no member will, will receive a, a standard scorecard. But of course, you can also opt uh, for an advanced scorecard uh, for an additional fee. If you want to uh, know more about what are the differences between both, you can uh, check out the uh, FAQ guide that we will explain further uh, in a moment.
The next one is the materials change index. So this one is in the public domain, aggregated data and is optional. So basically it's a public listing that celebrates all companies that look, uh, took part in the benchmark and is delivering transparency by sharing uh, participants' performance banning with the world and that have been uh, chosen to be featured because it's optional. Another important uh, result is the Climate Plus dashboard that also you will find it in the public domain uh, and aggregated data and um, basically provides insights of the cohort's impact and progress towards achieving the 45% reduction in greenhouse gases emissions by 2030, which is Textile Exchange Climate Plus Strategy Goal. The next one, uh, as you can see, we have quite a lot of results by being part of the benchmark, is a benchmark data fact sheet, which is also in the public domain and uh, is aggregated data. This, uh, as you can see on the slide, there's an update uh, this year. I was formerly known as the data reports that we have one for brands and retailers and another one for suppliers and manufacturers in the past. Um, the in is similar, so it's going to uh, provide an overview on how the cohort is moving towards adopting more preferred materials based on the data uh, from uh, all of you, the materials benchmark survey. And what's the difference this year is that we want to ensure that it's more visual, easy to digest, and factual. And last one uh, is the challenges dashboard, which tracks the annual progress of the 2025 Sustainable Cotton Challenge and Recycled Polyester Challenge. So that's all uh, from me so far. Now I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Prina who will deep dive in, into the different sections of the survey. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Jesse. Hello everyone. Uh, thanks once again for joining us today. Uh, I'll take us through the survey deep dive section where we have thoughtfully compiled uh, what may require a little bit of technical understanding of different parts of the survey as well as talk you through some of the updates done to the 2024 survey. It is important to note that the changes this year are minimal and are done more so as improvements to last year's experience. So let's uh, get started in the next slide. Perfect. Uh, we just wanted to sort of remind how can uh, participants access the reporting portal. Uh, for new companies, registrations are open and we encourage you to register today uh, if you wish to uh, embark on your materials benchmark journey. It's a simple registration form, as you can see on the right side of your screen. And um, we can also share the registration link in the chat box. Uh, if you're a new company and interested, I just uh, highly encourage you to register today. For returning companies, uh, you can simply log into the data reporting portal uh, to start with your 2024 survey, which will be live from April 1st. We also have provided a short link that takes you through the registration process, as well as shows you how can you add or remove uh, new users in your portal. Um, for example, if company X wants to add additional users to their data reporting portal or wants to remove an X colleague from the data reporting portal, uh, it's been made easier and it's explained step by step in this video link. Next slide. Now let's look into uh, a little bit on how uh, each section works and what's the aim of it. Uh, the first one is section one business integration. This section aims to understand the company's raw material sustainability approach and how it is integrated in the core of the business. This data helps us to understand where participants are strategically working on their raw material sustainability and how they are integrating it in their overall corporate strategy. What are the questions about in this section? The questions relate to approaching uh, to, new, uh, to raw material sustainability, short and long-term goals, resource allocation, governance, investment, engagement, and risk assessment, et cetera. So the list is there on the left. Uh, just to remind that the total score of this section is 20. Once again, um, remember that this section, like all other sections, have minimal changes from last year, especially it's a reminder for the returning companies. In the next slide. Perfect. So circular economy is another subsection of section one itself, where we aim to understand how companies approach adapting to circular economy and its principles, how they are thinking about linear business model, what are their strategy as well as implementation plans to decouple from economic activities uh, or from consumption of finite resources, how are they designing waste out of the system, et cetera. 
The questions asked here are about circular business models, example, rentals, reuse, etc. Pre and post consumer waste management, designing for circularity and more. The total score of this section is 10. So the grand total of section one is 30, which is 20 under the business integration and 10 under circular economy. Moving on. In section two, now this is the materials portfolio section. It's the only mandatory section as and is one of the core of the materials benchmark survey. It collects participants uptake data across their raw materials portfolio and related information as that's listed uh, on the screen. The aim is to help companies measure and manage their impacts while they transition their portfolio of materials from conventional to more preferred raw material choices. For this, companies need to prepare their uptake volumes for the reporting period, which is 2023 uptake volumes to be completed in this year's survey. Companies are asked to report the portfolio of at least one of their priority raw materials. However, companies that report on more than one material, it's up to the companies to decide the priority status of the materials reported based on their scale of uptake, risks, material, uh, risk related to the materials, opportunities that they have identified, et cetera. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, priority in, uh, in one of our coming slides. Questions in this section are about uptake data across raw materials, including target, transparency, risk associated to those materials, and understanding some of the material trends and recycle portfolio. We will cover uh, these once again a little bit in detail in the next few slides. You will see that the bulk of the score is taken by this mandatory section, which is equivalent to maximum 60 points. Moving on. Thank you. As we begin with the mandatory section, that's the materials portfolio, we uh, we thought we'd lay out some of the important screenshots from this survey in, in few of these slides to sort of take you through technical understanding of how this works. The materials portfolio, uh, as you can see, this is the first question when you start the section itself. And one of the first things that you will need to do is to select the materials in your portfolio, uh, as it's called, from the drop down as shown on the left side of your screen. Uh, it'll be a selection of all the list of materials that you can possibly report on. And you can tick the ones that uh, comprises of your company's materials portfolio. And next is for you to indicate which materials your company can report, that is, share the uptake volumes for, as well as complete subsequent questions related to it, as indicated just below on the left. I know it's a little small, but for example here, if you select that your company's portfolio has cotton, down, and elastane, then in the question below, you will need to indicate which ones can you report on. So here, for example, it is indicated that the company can report on cotton and down only. It cannot report on elastane for whatever reason. For example, if the company does not have uh, does not yet have good data on elastane, it's just an example. This will mean that the cotton and the down portfolio will open up fully for you to report, as indicated on the right side of the screen. And of course, maybe if uh, for elastane, you may have to just give some basic questions, but but nothing in detail. So this is how you select the portfolios that you can report on. In the next slide. Perfect. So here we will see how, uh, what, what are we talking when we are talking about uptake volumes? Um, I do see that there was a question as well in the Q&A box. Uh, just to remind, this is the core of the materials portfolio. This table is the core uh, because this is where you will be required to report your uptake volumes for the selected raw materials that we just saw. I promise it looks a little less complicated than the survey. We have added some uh, arrows and text boxes to support this demonstration and for your reference as we share the slide deck after this. Um, but firstly, what you'll have to begin with is to select the raw material categories that your company uses. For example, here we have, uh, here we have shown that for cotton, you can select organic or conventional, etc., and so on. Uh, we, we do request to re uh, for companies to report on their conventional volumes. Um, in addition to, of course, their preferred choices. Now, as you select your categories there, you will notice that the rows will open up according to your selections that's shown on the table um, to allow you to further input your information onto the table. Let's go from left to the right. Under the raw materials processing, you can specify the program, for example, here, organic cotton standard, um, 
Next, under the uptake volumes, you can report I, your uptake volumes either in product, yarn, fiber, or fabric. And you can also choose from a selection of metrics, for example, kilograms, metric tons, or pounds, depending on uh, what data is available to your company. After which, you should specify the product type that you are reporting. Is that apparel? Is it footwear? Or is it mixed when you've used uptake calculators? Once again, we'll talk a little bit about it when we are talking about our uh, suite of guides. And after you've inputted the data, um, so all of this under the uptake will come in a pop-up, which we haven't really shown here but uh, to for ease of demonstration. But of course, we can cover it more uh, in our support calls, as Jesse mentioned. Uh, but once you have put the selection uh, that we just talked about in your uptake volumes, uh, the data will calculate according to the combination and give you a conversion rate that will apply. And you'll get the final um, sort of the amount where it's 1.65. And in, in, in similar manner, the uptake volumes will come up and that will calculate the total at the bottom there. There's also information asked on this table, uh, such as product claims to understand transparency, country of origin and producer mapping, mapping to infer the level of traceability, and overall program targets to understand progress against those targets. Now, we do appreciate that different companies are at different levels in their journey. Hence, some of these information, especially in the last four columns, product claim, country of origin, producer mapping, and program targets, uh, we highly recommend to share as much as you have because these are scored, but it is completely okay if you do not have the information on some of these. So that's about the uptake table. Appreciating that this is a lot of technical information that we have just covered, um, I just want to take a moment uh, and remind everyone that the recording will be shared uh, with everyone for your reference. Uh, the slide deck will also be shared we will also talk a little bit about how our support calls uh, we'll be conducting in the coming months and how the guidance works around this. So I would just say uh, bear with us while we are sharing some technical information here. And of course, any burning questions, please add it to the Q&A. So now this slide is about recycling process. If your company has recycled materials in your portfolio, that's great. And the recycle table will open for those who have selected recycled options to report. Let's look into how you can fill in these tables. This is one of the first tables under the recycling page. There are a couple that we'll cover here and in the next slide. However, they are all together nicely, neatly in the survey. Uh, in this first recycle table, what it requires for you to do is to share a percentage of pre-consumer and post-consumer and unknown materials. There's an option uh, for unknown as well and also to share the percentage of origin of feedstocks, such as textile and non-textile, as well as unknown. Depending on what percentage you share, the metric tons will be calculated. Uh, some of the examples we thought we could share, uh, for example, non-textile post-consumer would be PET bottles for recycled polyester or recovered nets for recycled polyamide, or for textile pre-consumer, it could be cotton production, scraps, et cetera. So depending on uh, how good your quality of data is, you can, you can indicate it there in the, in the percentage column, and then the metric tons will auto-calculate. In the next slide, this is one of the other tables on the recycled page, which requires you to share uh, the breakdown of the non-textile-based feedstock, especially for uh, synthetic raw materials, for example, for polyester or polyamide, if you have non-textile feedstock in your portfolio. Companies can specify whether they are using bottles, ocean waste, et cetera, or what is unknown. In the next ta uh, table on, on, on the bottom, uh, you are required to share the percentage of materials recycled to me mechanical or chemical recycling. Now, all of this data is very interesting to understand where industry trend is going with regards to recycling and processes. In both the tables, the metric tons or the uptake volumes will automatically once again, be calculated according to the percentage that you share there. And you just have to ensure that the total is 100 at the bottom, 100% at the bottom, or the metric tons of recycle amount uh, that is indicated as total at the bottom, you know, is, is matching what you have shared before in the, in the table before on recycled uptake. Sorry, we had to break these two in two slides, but just reminding you that all the recycle tables will be nicely together in one page in the survey itself. Moving forward. 
So this is the priority matrix. Um, it's a quick one, but an important one where companies can select materials that they identify as priority. It is up to companies to decide the priority status of the materials reported based on either, once again, the scale of the uptake, risks of the materials identified or opportunities identified by the company. The flexibility that we've provided here for companies to choose it themselves is because we appreciate that each company has their own specific criteria to access their materials and understand which are their priorities and non-priorities. So in that uh, final column where you can see final priority status, you can select uh, from the drop down either if it's priority or non-priority for you. However, it is important to note that only the priority materials will be scored. So, uh, and thus will uh, contribute to your overall materials benchmark score. So we also will look into how the scoring methodology and priority materials work in, in the subsequent slides. Moving on. Perfect. So that was all about section three. Uh, once again, just reminding that we have covered bits of that because we thought that it's important to share some of the technical bits. Feel free to ask us questions. Now we jump back to section three, which is the impact areas. This section aims to capture participants' progress, targets, monitoring, and reporting for climate and nature-related activities. Example, biodiversity, freshwater, ocean, land use, and soil health as listed there. Once again, appreciate that different companies are at different stages in terms of internalizing some of these climate and nature areas for their strategy. But this is to bring out the essence and importance of what is out there and help companies look at various options where they can start or where they can make further progress concerning these impact areas. The questions are about assessing impacts created at raw material production, setting targets and implementing activities and measures to reduce negative impact as well as to increase positive impact. The total score of this section is 10. In the next slide. So as we've wrapped up uh, the main highlights of the three sections this year, uh, we, we just thought uh, we would keep some of the main updates or improvements in 2024 survey in one slide. Um, of course, there are a couple more, but uh, we thought these are some of the important ones to sort of share with you. The first one, as you can see, a couple of new raw material programs have been added. For example, under the man-made cellulosics, we now have added a combination option uh, for FSC or PEFC materials for those companies that were not able to report these volumes separately before. Now this combination is available, as you can see highlighted there. For mohair, conventional mohair has been added for companies that use and report uh, conventional mohair. Moving on to the next, this year, other fibers have been split to four main categories, other plant paste, other synthetics, other animal fibers, and other polyethanol or polylactic acid. Previously, other fibers were all under one umbrella. So now this allows flexibility to sort of companies to report uh, other categories of materials um, under four subheadings. Also this year, Textile Exchange's new commitment, as we mentioned before, deforestation call to action for leather, We'll start, uh, we'll start reporting via the materials benchmark survey. We are very excited for this. And for this, we have added a brand new module for signatories to, uh, of this commitment to complete. Last but not the least, the risk prioritization assessment of raw materials is now aligned with our MIE or the Materials Impact Explorer. Now, the Materials Impact Explorer examines the location-specific impacts of raw materials, and this is an exciting update to which we have attached a link for you to explore more. It is important to note that this year, the good news is that for returning companies, the questions are pre-filled with 2023 answers for all the returning companies. Of course, except for some of the questions in the introduction of the materials portfolio section, where there are minor updates um, and pre-filling was not possible. Of course, all companies, irrespective of their returning status or new, will have to provide fresh uptake volumes from 2023. So that's just a reminder. In the next slide, this is the last one from me. Uh, we thought it would be uh, nice to show you a summary of all the updates in one slide. You can see the new questions are highlighted, which is like about four of them. Um, and all updated questions are listed here for your reference. We'll not cover uh, each of this in detail right now. Uh, and the changes, once again, are minimal. For example, you know, questions may have become mandatory 
or some of the answer choices are updated, et cetera, as you can see on this list. But we thought it would be a nice table to bring everything uh, at one place. So that's it from me. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, ask your questions. Uh, we are very happy to help you. And with that, I'll pass it back to my colleague, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, uh, Prina. Uh, so we know that is a lot, uh, but that's why now I'm going to explain to you uh, what is the support resources and guidance available for, for the 2024 materials benchmark to ensure that you have a smooth experience. So first, I'm going to start from uh, the toolkit, uh, which is the place uh, where you can find all the necessary guides and resources uh, that you will need during the, the process. Uh, you will find from general documents that uh, can give you an overview, FAQs, uh, supporting videos, uh, and technical guidance, as you can see in the slide. Depending where you are in your journey, uh, you can pick from where you want to start. If you are new, of course, we recommend starting with the overview and the FAQs. Uh, if you are returning a company, you can directly dive into the technical section. Uh, tech, uh, textile exchange members also will benefit of a more detailed onboarding checklist uh, and you will uh, access with a password that we have already shared via email. You can find this toolkit in the Benchmark Community Hub that I'm sure many of you are already in. And you should also have received it via email um, if you are a returning company or if you have already expressed interest in the materials benchmark. Of course, also after the webinar, if you des decide to take part in the benchmark, uh, I hope so, you will also receive an email with this toolkit. Moving to the next one. Uh, so the main support document uh, helping in completing the survey is the materials benchmark survey guide that you will also find in the toolkit. For those that already are familiar with it, please know that we kept, we kept it very similar. So we there are no many changes this year, as you can see, uh, only very small updates. And well, as uh, many of you already know, uh, for the new ones, is an extensive and detailed document uh, since it includes all the sections and questions of the materials benchmark survey. So basically, this guide uh, encompasses everything you need to know about how to complete your survey. So it's really the document to, to check, I would say. Um, also, it is, it's long, but it's easy to navigate since it's completely aligned with the, the survey structure, of course. Um, and for example, if you need uh, to read and consult only a specific section, for example, uh, the materials portfolio, because it's the mandatory section, uh, you can do it very easily just by clicking the section or the question that you are interested in directly from the uh, table of the content. Uh, so moving um, to the next one, which is the, as you can see, this is the materials benchmark platform, ProBench, that we call. So while you're completing the survey, uh, you will also find guidance, of course, and further information directly in the materials benchmark pro, uh, platform. As you can see on uh, number one, at the top, you will find what we call the uh, scrollable guidance and subsection level with a summary of general information uh, that is taken directly from the survey guide. For most of the questions, you will find on the right uh, a question mark identifying info boxes at question level. Uh, we provide with uh, you with more information on why this question is about, and also uh, we include examples on how to answer uh, the question. Uh, on number three, uh, you can see that uh, we have also hovers in the survey providing a specific definition for certain key terms that uh, we think is important. Uh, then on the right, again, uh, you will find that some questions uh, with orange box, uh, which are the score questions. Those are, are mandatory, uh, and uh, you will see that also uh, evidence is required. Uh, so indeed, during the review of phase that we saw before during the journey, at least for score questions, we need to make sure answers are supported by evidence, uh, which can be uh, done uh, through a free text box, links, or attachments. And the last one, uh, the last guidance that you will find in the platform are uh, this, uh, well, a flag more than a guidance, is those red lines appearing. And this means that these questions are mandatory and must be answered to move forward. Uh, also, the system is, uh, you will see that if you don't answer those mandatory questions, will uh, not allow you to move on. 
so how you can prepare? This is very important. Um, so first, you need to determine your priority fibers and raw materials, the conventionals and the preferred raw materials based on what we defined before. Uh, develop an internal tax team. Uh, that's very important. So who needs to be involved to collect all the data for the benchmark and complete the benchmark survey? Then check uh, that you can report your priority fibers and raw materials uptake volumes of the previous year. Uh, so since we are in 2024 uh, materials benchmark survey, you will be reporting your 2023 volumes. Then uh, the next one, the next step uh, to get ready is select the sections that you would like to complete. And here I will really emphasize that don't feel the pressure to complete them all, especially if you are more at the beginning of your journey or if you are new to the benchmark. Uh, the only mandatory section uh, is the materials portfolio, which is the core of the framework of the benchmark. And then uh, the last one, uh, which is also very important, uh, is set internal timelines to be sure to complete the benchmark within the given deadline that, uh, as we saw, will be launched the 1st of April and will be uh, we will close the survey the 7th of June, 10 weeks. Um, moving to now the scoring uh, methodology um, that I saw there was a, a question uh, related to that. So the materials benchmark is scored according to a scoring methodology. Uh, and the scoring helps, of course, we know that helps companies in understanding if they are progressing year on year, specifically on which topics uh, uh, there is still room for improvements. In 2024, uh, the overall scoring methodology remains the same as last year, when it was updated last year. Uh, it's based on the preferred fibers materials matrix methodology, the version 2.0. Um, for some further information, uh, please have a look you know, at that scoring, method, um, uh, scoring guidance that you will also find in the toolkit and in the HAD community. Um, so today, uh, we just want to uh, mention some key elements. Uh, first, that the bandings uh, remains the same as last year, uh, that are ranging from level one be developing to level four leading. And then the scores per section, as you can see here in the slide, remain the same. So the total score is 100 points uh, for section, uh, section one, which is business integration, will be 20 points and circular economy 10 points, being the total of section one, uh, 30 points. Then for section two, uh, the materials portfolio is, the, is 60 points. Um, for section three, impact areas, uh, 10 points. So as you can see for virtual uh, companies, uh, you, they will see that it's exactly the same. Um, and also it's important to flag here that only score questions are considered in the calculation of the scoring. And as we already mentioned, throughout the survey, we have indicated which question has scored, which that uh, orange box. We understand that uh, the, the scoring can be complex. So uh, when the survey is launched on you know, the 1st of April, we'll be running these support calls. Uh, and some of these calls, of course, we are gonna definitely cover the scoring methodology questions. So what's next? Um, so how to get started? Uh, we always recommend uh, you to join the Materials Benchmark Hub community because it's really the place to connect, to collaborate uh, and to exchange knowledge and it's where we keep everything, all the guidance and everything updated and, and the news. Then, of course, also explore the materials toolkit uh, because it's a place where you will find all the guides and resources, as mentioned before, too. And last but not least, join uh, those uh, weekly support calls that will start from April 11. Um, and this will be, uh, as you know, topic-based calls uh, to provide any additional support uh, during the submission phase. And we want you to set up those topics to ensure we are covering your needs. Uh, for this, we are going to launch a poll now uh, where we ask you about which topics are you more interested to cover during these calls. So I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Claire, who will be uh, reading through this poll and your results. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. So here's the poll uh, we want, would like you to answer. This is a multiple choice question, and you can select the, the topics that you would like more uh, support on. So uh, it can be how do I get started from the materials benchmark platform to minimum requirements, then the introduction and business integration sections, the circular economy section. Then we have divided the materials portfolio section in three different um, 
topics, like uh, if you want us to focus on the uptake volumes and recycling, or on the uptake calculator, or maybe if you want to report on more complex materials like leather. Um, we uh, can also deliver some further support on the impact areas section, and maybe on the textile exchange material commitments if you are a challenge signatory or a different or a call to action signatory. And then we can um, uh, also address the scoring methodology and how to move forward in your journey. If you have any other uh, idea, you can select the other box and in the free text box, you can uh, write your answer. So we we'll leave you a bit of time to answer and then we can have a look uh, to the results. Thank you. Okay, I think we can have a look at the answers if we have um, some people voting. Great, thank you all for uh, participating in the poll. We will take a note of uh, everything to address in the, in the different support calls, but I can see that most of you are interested about the materials portfolio section, and this is definitely the most uh, complex. So we'll make sure to address these topics um, in uh, the different support calls. Thank you again for participating. And I think we can uh, continue and address the, your questions in the dedicated Q&A session. Yes, thank you so much, everybody, for for voting, um, for answering the poll. Very interesting to see the results. So now we are moving to the to the Q and A. Uh, I saw that there were some questions popping up. Um, okay, so I can see there's one question coming up is uh, from Roberta, who says, "Could you clarify what you mean by uptake volume, please?" Okay, very good question. Uh, so when we talk about uptake, uh, we refer to the volume of uh, a raw material that can be fiber or non-fiber uh, that is used no, in the creation of a, a textile product during the, the reporting period. So uh, uptake is equal to the volume of a raw material. I don't know if that's clear. Also, uh, we are uh, the whole team here. So if someone uh, wants to jump in and clarify something, please uh, do. Again, on the materials portfolio, maybe it's, uh, it can help uh, reply further. It's how is the uptake rate calculated by type of fiber? Which data point do I need to collect for each material? So that relates to uh, the scoring methodology. And uh, here we recommend to, to check uh, the what we saw before, the PFMM uh, version 2.0. And, and there you will find exactly how easy score for the different uh, raw materials, type of raw materials. And well, you will find also that in the in the toolkit. Uh, so uh, check out the, the scoring methodology guide. And in case you have um, any questions, any doubts, of course, uh, here we are. Okay, then we have one question from, um, uh, who says, can we participate if our priority material is non-textile? So um, here also I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Haley just to ensure that uh, uh, we are given the right answer. But uh, what we cover here uh, in the benchmark survey are um, well fibers and non-fibers uh, raw materials, right? Uh, so oh sorry, I'm on mute. Yeah, so we we don't actually accommodate non-textile at the moment. So we have 15 um, options that you can report against and there are others, but others are animal, um, plant and MMCF. Um, so we, we don't currently cover that. Um, we are focused purely on textiles and fibers. I hope that helped. Thank you. Then nice. we have uh, another question. Is there a fee for participating in the materials benchmark? Uh, good question. Uh, so far, no, it's voluntary uh, for members and non-members of Textile Exchange. So it's easy to participate. <laughs> That's why we really encourage you to be part of the materials benchmark. 
Also, Claire, I see a question about the why, uh, if we can go back to the why slide uh, at the end of the presentation. So maybe um, if we can, Chiara, put up that uh, slide and go back to the why, just to ensure that everybody uh, is aware why to participate. Yeah. Yes, here. So as you can see here, uh, that's the why. So you can compare your performance against the largest parliamentary peer-to-peer. -peer. You can build that fiber strategy uh, and use the benchmark uh, to guide improvements. Uh, you can demonstrate also a commitment to transparency, meet the reporting requirements set by, by stakeholders. And here I will also uh, strongly uh, flag the legislation and engage with others in the community. Hopefully that's clear and well, we will share this uh, slide deck with all of you, so you will have access to that. Um, then there's someone asking, where can I find which questions have been updated or changed from the 2023 survey? Good question also. Uh, so you will see that previously, uh, yeah, maybe uh, I see Prina. Uh, so maybe Prina, you wanna answer? No, not. I mean, uh, I think Jesse, it's it's that slide um yeah. that that we shared, uh, in case we wanna. So just just reminding that the slide deck and the recording will be shared, um, and it's in slide number. Going back, it's literally in slide number twenty six. If you can share the screen or um. Hmm. Yeah, and also to mention that you can find it in the materials benchmark survey guide. Uh, towards the end of the guide, you will find uh, which are the, the updates uh, and also which uh, uh, questions have been preferred or not. Thank you. Thanks, Kiara. So that's the summary of all the updates. And like Jesse said, the summary is also in the in the guide. Thank you so much, Brina. I see a few more. So yeah, Claire, if you wanna go ahead. Yeah, there's also one question about how can we use the confidential scorecard? Okay, uh, so regarding the, the confidential uh, scorecard, uh, it's really um, a roadmap no? uh, on where you are you know, in your journey. Uh, so, will give you, you know, uh, hints on which areas uh, you need to improve. Uh, year on, you will get also a year-on-year -year comparison. Uh, and also you will get a uh, benchmark against your subsector and against the, the sector, which are all the companies uh, part of uh, joining the benchmark. Uh, so it's one of the most useful, useful tools that we have in the, in the benchmark. Also, you can find more information at FAQ in case uh, you want to dive into what includes the advanced scorecard and the standard scorecard. It's great to, to get so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> um... I can see another question uh, saying that there is a way I can upload a template, uh, XLS file instead of finding manually uh, the online form. So, so far how it works, the, the materials benchmark, uh, of course, having your data ready, that's the first thing, you know, so that's uh, already very important. Uh, but then how it works in the materials portfolio, you need to enter the data manually so far. Of course, that we, we know that that's something that um, uh, needs to be improved and something that we are looking into for uh, next year. Um, okay. Um... I see another question, more technical one, uh, saying that what is the process to add a brand to an existing uh, account uh, currently reporting from Speedo and Warehouse and the Pentland brands, and we'd like to add a third brand, Andura. Uh, so that's something that we can do. Uh, so we can add a 
and another uh, account uh, and just you need to let us know and we will we will do it in the system so you can drop an email to benchmark at textandexchange.org um, and we will manage that um well, I'm picking up the, the question. I hope that's okay, uh, Claire, uh, because I have been just in front. So I see another interesting question. Does the survey ask for the uptake volumes only uh, on raw materials level? Uh, yes. So we asked that uh, question at raw materials level. And I again, the questions. Yeah, sorry, go, JC. Yeah, no, just I wanted to say again to, to flag down that. Uh, uh, that survey guide that we have, the, the long one with all the details. So you will also find if you need anything else on the materials portfolio, also, of course, the uh, uptake volumes, uh, uptake slash volumes uh, there in the in the guide. Yeah, we also have another question from Charlie saying, is code VR2 only for chemical recycling? I'm not sure we have uh, the answer right now. So could you maybe clarify or if you want to send an email to us uh, and we can uh, reply to you uh, later? Yeah, I will. Um... Yeah, say the same, you know, Charlie, if you can please uh, further clarify. Um, of course, those questions that we don't have the time to cover right now, we will uh, get uh, an answer from us via email. So I think we are almost at the top of the hour. Um, so thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, as mentioned at the beginning uh, by Claire, today's presentation has been recorded and it will be posted on the Hub uh, community. Uh, and also our recording of the webinar will be emailed to you afterwards. If you, of course, agree to receive our communications when you register, um, it will be also available on our uh, YouTube channel. So thank you again and see you soon. Bye.